Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new video. Sean's the name, YouTube's the game. In this video, we'll be talking about YouTube end screens and how to specifically create a super high quality one from scratch. Now I'm going to be using two programs today, one being Photoshop and the other being Sony Vegas. However, you can use any image editing tool out there and any video editing tool as well. It's totally up to your preference. Now before we get started, I think it's important to actually look at what an end screen is and what it can actually do. So we're going to go ahead and just click on my video right here, YouTube success in three words. And you can see, Hello. you know, it's a five minute video or whatever, me doing the video. But if you come all the way to the end here, you can see right as I fade out, we can go ahead and watch it right now. We'll go ahead and watch the very ending of this. We'll go ahead and hit play. Again guys, Sean's the name, YouTube's the game. I wish you all the best of luck on it. And bam, there is our beautiful looking end screen. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it really quick. Now an end screen is what you put at the end of your videos and it has some clickable things in it for people to actually click on and go to. So for example, in this video I actually had one of my friends animate and do some cheesy little drawings for it. So I went ahead and linked his channel right here. I've got my channel right here, so in case people aren't subscribed to me, they don't have to actually hit the subscribe button down here that'll show up. They can actually click it in the video to subscribe. And then I've also got another video for them to go check out. Now, end screens can really do wonders for channels, and I highly recommend you use them if you aren't already. But since you're watching this video, I'm assuming you know what an end screen is and what it can do, since you're here to find out how to actually make one. So let's actually begin and start working on creating an end screen. Now it's actually a lot simpler than you think. So I'm going to start out in Photoshop now and you can start out in any image based software out there. I'm going to go ahead and go into file. We're going to go new and I'm going to create a 1280 by 720 canvas. You want something to be video friendly. So there's our canvas right now. Now what we design on here is what is going to show up in our end screen. Now you can create your own image from scratch which would take you a lot more time or you can do what I do. Go to Google, Google some abstract images. Go ahead and import some in here. So I just grabbed this one off Google after searching for abstract image. And go ahead and stretch it to screen. And now we've got something to work with here. Now what I look for when it comes to picking an image is really just envision what your end screen is going to look like. You can add elements like videos and channels to subscribe to and other little components. So what I would do with this image is basically put a video over here that I want to recommend to people. Put maybe a YouTube channel right here, another YouTube channel right here, and that'd be a good looking end screen. It's really that simple. And I'm going to go ahead and actually import another image for you guys to actually see here. So this is another abstract image I found off Google. We're just going to go ahead and stretch it to screen here, maybe even expand it a little bit more. And now we've got this image right here. I can add in a video right here and a video right here. And there we go. We got two videos for this end screen. The background image really doesn't matter a whole lot because you're going to be putting your elements in front of it. So just pick something that maybe fits with the theme of your channel, whether it be the colors or whatever image you find off Google. Now, you occasionally see some end screens on YouTube that are fitted perfectly to adding in elements. However, I don't recommend you do this because the resolution on YouTube can change depending on the viewer's device and YouTube can actually end up moving your elements a little bit. So I don't recommend you making a specifically lined out end screen image. Just go with something pretty generic, pretty basic and something that just looks cool in the background. And feel free to get as creative with this as you want. Right now, just for example purposes, I'm literally just grabbing an image off Google. You can customize this, add in pictures of yourself, maybe props or something that relates to your channel. Make it fit your channel uniquely. But okay, we've got two images right here that I'm going to actually save and we're going to import into Sony Vegas to actually kind of play around with and make our end screen come to life. So now that we're in Sony Vegas, we just go ahead and import our image in here. And you want it to be about 20 seconds in length. So we're going to take it out to 20 seconds exactly here. And now we have our image in Sony Vegas. Now, you can just leave it like this and really add some music in and bam, you got yourself an end screen. But what I highly recommend is you actually make this animated and add in some movement somewhere. Now, to add motion, I'm actually going to be showing you three different examples today. So we're going to go ahead and import here, which is our snowflakes falling on a green screen. So we're just going to kind of crisp in this image up a little bit. Go ahead and throw in our chroma key green screen here where we at chroma key here, add and then change this to green. Make it look really nice, throw it over our image here and then we'll go ahead and actually just kind of watch it back and you can see there's a tiny bit of motion here. Now this might be a little bit too much motion as you can see you're just really attracted to the snow right now. So what I recommend is slow the clip down and uh, lower the opacity a little bit on it so you don't see as much of it. 
and now if you watch it back it's a lot slower you see a little bit of frame lag right now but that's just because we're in preview we're going to lower it a little bit more and now you can see a tiny bit of it and it's actually not bad snow is a very easy example to use i don't necessarily recommend it i'm just showing you that we can actually add motion to a still image Here's another great example, we got a simple abstract color background, so we're going to go ahead and actually just throw this right on top of our image and lower the opacity a ton, and it actually does a pretty good job at making it look a little animated, so we'll lower this to about 15%, and as you can see the coloring on it will slightly change, it's very hard to tell right now, and if it's really hard to tell you can actually speed it up a little bit and make the clip a little longer and then the color should change a little bit more. And if it's still harder, you can even raise the opacity a little bit. And now you can kind of see that the colors will slightly change in the background. Again, you're not focusing on the viewer to actually be noticing the motion in the background. You just want to keep them engaged in your end screen. The last example here is actually another abstract kind of video. And again, if you want to be using a video just in general instead of a still image, that's totally fine. You could pretty much just use this video for your end screen if you really want to do that. I like images a little more so there's less motion in it. I think too much motion can be a little distracting. But again, if you want to just leave this like this and you can make this your end screen, that would work just fine as well because you've got a little bit of motion going on in the background. This one in particular is a really good example because there's not a whole lot of motion, but there is some and it keeps the viewer engaged. But again, this last example, you'll come over here, do the same thing and just lower your opacity a little bit. And you can kind of see about maybe till there, maybe a little lower. You can kind of see now I've got a little bit of motion going on in the background and feel free to get super creative with this. Add in multiple different ways to make it look like it has motion. Now I also want to show you a few other examples right now of some end screens I've made in the past that seem to work really well. So here's one for one of my other channels. As you can see there's a tiny bit of motion going on, the background is super clean and fits the theme perfectly. And here's an example from one of my other channels that seems to also work really well. You can see there's a tiny bit of motion in the flag in the background and really just fits the theme perfectly. So again, try not to overthink this entire process. It's actually a lot easier than you think and you don't need anything super insane. If you don't want to add motion and you think that's just a little bit too confusing, then totally fine. You can use a still image. I just think adding in a tiny bit of motion still makes the viewer feel like they're watching part of your video. But coming back to our example, the last step is to really add in some music. Now what I recommend is you go on YouTube, go to some NCS, some non-copyright music, and throw in a song that has a lot of hype to it and maybe just gets the viewer kind of engaged. So we're going to go ahead and use this song called Invincible. It's a great song. It, it bangs pretty well. So we'll go ahead and there's, you see the drop right here. Now what I like to do is actually build the drop a tiny bit in your end screen. So I'm going to go ahead and move this all the way to here, and we're going to get, you see how we get a little bit of the drop there, so I'll let you listen to it. So as you can see, there's a tiny bit of this drop right here, the boom, it just bangs right there. So what I like to do is actually use that in the end screen. So I'll bring this all the way over to here and just kind of cut it at the end of however length we want to keep it. And then right here, I add in just a little bit of a fade. So we'll go ahead and do the fade up until about there, and then now it'll, it'll look like this. Right as the fade kind of comes to life, the drop will hit, and the drop is actually when you add in your elements on YouTube, which is a whole lot later. But this is what your end screen will look like. Boom. Pretty basic, pretty simple. You can add in a little bit of a fade at the end. Not necessary. If it just cuts off like that, it's totally fine as well, because uh, it'll be the end of the video on YouTube anyway. But that looks pretty good. And once you have your end screen actually rendered out, it's super simple to actually implement it. You just throw it onto one of your videos when you're editing it. So let's say we'll go ahead and import this end screen right here. Let's say we have a video that's maybe three minutes long and it's three minutes of a black screen. And we'll go ahead and just throw this on at the very end. So say this is literally our video all right here. If I actually had a video to record, it's all right here. And then we just throw our end screen on at the very end. So basically our video would play. It would play. We'd say thank you for watching, blah, 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 blah. We appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. And then our end screen would roll just like this. And boom, it would play all the way out and then it would fade out over here and we're good to go. So you can go ahead and actually render the entire video right there and then upload it to YouTube. Now keep in mind you're not totally done with the end screen process. Once you upload it and your video is actually done processing, then you can actually add in your elements. So this should actually process pretty quickly since it's a very basic video and it's super quick. Now that it's ready, you can go ahead and click on over to it and go into edit video and this will take you to the end screen area for you to edit it. You can go up here and click end screen and annotations and this is where you pretty much do it. 
So we'll go ahead and you can see the last kind of 20 seconds of our video is loaded up right here. And so what we can do is actually, I, what I could do is actually import it from a video, but we're going to do it from scratch right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a video or a playlist. We'll do a most recent upload. We'll create the element. And basically, bam, there's our video to be showed off. So remember, this is when we're just maybe thinking about doing two videos. I can even maybe even squeeze in another element here. Let's see if we can play around. So here, we'll go ahead and do best for viewer. And then we'll go ahead and drag this one over here. And then we might even be able to add into a subscribe and add in my channel dead center in the middle. And that actually looks pretty good. That's a decent end screen right there. If we play it, you can see that these things all pop up. Now, you want them to kind of pop up on the drop, like I was saying earlier. So if we can kind of move these and finagle them a little bit, and you can play around and make sure this is the best for your video. But then, it should look something like this. Again, play around with this and make sure you're familiar with it. And once you have it set up one time, you can actually just import from video here, and I can just pick it, and it'll in instantly add in all my settings for my last one. So I import it, it'll replace these ones, and it goes to exactly how I want it set up. So all you have to do is really set it up once. So here's what our three examples actually ended up looking like, starting with the first one looks nice and clean again the beauty of these end screens is the fact that you can put these elements anywhere on it and it'll still look good so you can see this one still looks really good you got your tiny bit of motion going on in the background hopefully keeping viewers pretty engaged here's our next example right here and this one's great again you can put elements pretty much anywhere in this one to make it look really solid I like this one a lot because you can actually make this video a lot bigger than what it usually is at if you look at this one, these videos are very small. This one is as big as you can make it, and it fits pretty decently. Now, again, there is a border you're constricted to, so if I could, I would lower these elements a little lower and higher, make that one a little bit higher, but I actually couldn't because you're restricted to a little bit of a box here, so keep that in mind, but still looks pretty solid. Then the third one is a great one because you can literally do whatever you want with it. This one, I just put one video in the middle, and you can pretty much do anything. you got that nice color scheme kind of changing in the background. And bam, I mean, it's that simple. It's really not that hard to make a very simple looking end screen that is incredibly effective. And that'll pretty much sum it up for YouTube end screens and how to actually make one. Hopefully you guys learned something new. Again, don't overthink this too much. It is a very simple process. Get creative with it make something pretty unique. But at the end of the day, the simpler, the better. You want the main focus of the end screen to be on the elements you actually add on YouTube, opposed to actually what your end screen is all about. So just keep that in mind with a little bit of food for thought. And if you guys want some more tips and tricks on how to be very successful on YouTube, then check out my website, charmalku.com. It'll be linked in the description of this video, and it's really all over my channel. At the end of the day, though, I really hope you guys learned something new. If you did, hit that like button, drop me a comment down below. But that is going to do it for today. Sean's the name, YouTube's the game. I wish you all the best of luck on here, and you're about to see my end screen.